Welcome to the Athlete Insights Podcast, hosted by Yash Pad Day, a podcast focused on letting athletes tell their journeys in their sport. This podcast is presented by Boxed Water. Boxed Water is better. Welcome into another episode of the Athlete Insights Podcast. Today I've got my guest, Kate Standiford. Uh, she's she's a libero um, for the Weber State Wildcats women's volleyball team. So Kate, uh, thank you so much for for taking the time and uh, and coming on. I know you said you're back in in Utah, back home, and uh, so appreciate you. I know you guys got you guys had spring uh, spring practices and volleyball and stuff, and you guys probably have camps and stuff coming up. But appreciate you you taking the time and and coming on and chatting with me. Yeah, of course, I'm excited to be here. So um, as I do with uh, my my guests, uh, generally I like to start from the beginning and kind of get to where you are now, and so kind of talk to me about your early, you know, early memories with sport. When did you start playing sport? Was volleyball kind of your number one sport right off the bat? Did you play any other sports? Kind of talk to me, go talk to me about that and kind of your process early on with sport. Yeah, for sure. So volleyball was actually not my number one sport. Um, I played my first sport that I probably played was basketball and I played basketball and softball when I was younger and I, played it pretty competitively for a long time. Uh Um, I actually have an older brother. He's two and a half years older than me. And of course, having the older brother, I like idolized him and wanted to be just like him. And Mm -hmm. so he played basketball. And so that was like, oh, I want to be just like him. So I'm going to do that. And so Mm -hmm. I played that for a while and I played softball. I didn't actually start playing volleyball until I was probably like 13 or 14. Um, And I just played on like the little junior high team and um I started playing clubs so I played all three like for while I was in middle school for a while yeah Um, and basketball was always my favorite that was like I thought I wanted to go play that in college like that's what I wanted to do yeah Um, and then I started playing club volleyball and I was like oh I really like this this is a lot of fun and um as I got older volleyball kind of just turned into my number one and gotcha. I kind of stuck with that. And then when I got into high school, um, I didn't play the other two as much and I didn't play them competitively and stuff. I kind of just focused on volleyball and it kind of just took off from there. But one of my, my best friend who was my next door neighbor was the one that was like, Hey, like you should come play volleyball like yeah. with me and try out with me. So uh-huh. I was like, Okay. I don't know anything about it, but sure. Why not? So it kind of, yeah stemmed from there but I definitely didn't start with it that's for sure gotcha what position did you play basketball wise early on um I was usually like some kind of guard guard okay yeah yeah Uh, that's I play pickup ball that's that's usually my role point guard or Mm -hmm. uh, shooting guard so no that makes sense so um is there any I know you said you didn't play volleyball early on but is there any core memory from playing sports early on that really stands out to you in your youth sport playing basketball softballs or something that stands out one memory that really stands out to you um I think I wouldn't call it like one specific memory gotcha. but one thing that I've noticed and like that I've very much kind of taken with me as I've gone older is all the memories that I had with my dad practicing like mm, okay. whether it was we went to the church and we shot thousands of shots for basketball or in the backyard he'd let me pitch to him or whatever just he was always so willing to do that and so the time that we spent together and like kind of the relationships that we built that way I think is something that was really big for me that kind of I mean it went through all of my other sports that I played but that was that's probably one of the best memories I guess so I wouldn't call it like one memory but something Mm -hmm. that I very much loved and I still remember Gotcha. Gotcha. And you mentioned you started playing volleyball at 13, 14 years old, and you kind of alluded to your high school career there. So we'll kind of jump into your high school um, career now. Can you describe your overall high school experience playing high school volleyball? Kind of what was that like? What did you what lessons? What kind of what did you learn um, through that process in those four years? Yeah, so my freshman year. So I'm from Lehigh, Utah. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of like 30 minutes south of Salt Lake. But so my freshman year, I was able to play for the high school, which was really fun. So I played for Lehigh High. Mm -hmm. Um, And my freshman year, I got a little bit of varsity time just 
kind of DSing. Um, mm -hmm. I've kind of played pretty much most positions growing up. Like I know how to do everything. Yeah. Um, and so kind of throughout my years in high school and later on at Weber, like it very much helps me because I could do a ton. But my first year, um, I played for Lehigh High, which was fun. And I got to play a little bit on varsity DSing. And then um, my sophomore year, they actually opened up a brand new high school yeah. here in Lehigh, which my house was in the boundaries for. So I ended up going there and it's called Sky Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, so I went there my sophomore, junior and senior year. Gotcha. And it was really fun. And something that was kind of unique that I feel like not a lot of people get to the opportunity to do was because it was a new school, because it was something brand new, I was able to kind of like pave a way and like mm -hmm. start from scratch somewhere. Yeah. And um, so that was really awesome. And starting out so our sophomore year, like we were, we were always pretty good. Like we were never like really, really bad starting off. Mm -hmm. um, so my first two years, we did really well. And um, my senior year, we actually ended up winning state, which was really awesome and a really cool um, experience being able to see from the beginning of what we did, kind of mm -hmm. creating a culture. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I learned from that was mm -hmm. um, how to kind of build a culture and yeah. fight through and kind of create that culture and maintain it throughout all those years. Because coming in, we started from nothing, right? Like we had nothing. Yeah we decided what we wanted to do and what we wanted to create there. And so it was pretty awesome to be able to go through my years and see that. And then my little sister actually came in right after me and be able okay. to see, keep going, which was pretty fun. And, um, yeah. but yeah, definitely a lot of lessons learned just cause it's brand new and everything, but yeah. it was pretty awesome to be able to be a part of something kind of bigger than myself, I guess you could say. And what's cool is you said you you were able to, you know, every position. So even though you're currently a setter, you know, kind of how all these positions work um, and how these different positions go in the rotations. Um, and that's always great, you know, being a, a master, a jack of all trades, uh, as, as we say, right? So mm -hmm. um, that's always great. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you mentioned the key word there, culture and, and building that culture uh, is so key, so important. Um, start and you, if you can start that at the youth level, at the high school level, um, it only carries forward into the the collegiate setting. And so, um, and this is something that I I'm interested in as well. Now you you talk about your high school experience. Um, could you discuss a little bit about your recruiting process? Kind of what what how how did that go? What was that? What was your process like? And how did you land on Weber State? Um, at that end. Yeah, for sure. So, um. Weber was actually the first school that reached out to me. Okay. Um, it wasn't the only school, but it was the first. So when I was a, I think I was going to start my sophomore year at this mm -hmm. new school. Yeah. Um, the head coach here, Jeremiah Larson, he um, came and did like a satellite camp. So the coach comes to my high school. They like run the summer camp. They bring mm -hmm. players if they want. They help run the camp. And then that's kind of it instead of like a high school coach running it. Mm -hmm. So he actually came to my high school camp that year and like I just had sent him I sent him an email right before like hey this is my name like I want to play college volleyball whatever and at that age like especially because the rules have changed a little bit like there was yeah. you couldn't talk to them there was no kind of yeah. communication whatsoever you know yeah and so he came and I definitely wasn't like amazing like I had I worked hard and I was pretty athletic, but I definitely wasn't like the best or anything. Mm -hmm. And so he came and he worked with me and they actually invited me up to their like skills camp that they do, which was the next week. So he's like, just come up, you know, like it'd be fun. Then you get to work with me some more. So I went up there mm -hmm. um, and then we just kind of talked and they actually offered me a scholarship later that November. So, okay. which was pretty cool. Um, I still was like keeping my options open, talking to other people. Um, mm -hmm. I was talking to a couple other schools, a lot of the big sky schools, mostly gotcha. um, a couple of the Utah schools, but, um, yeah, so I was kind of just keeping my options open and I just loved Jeremiah and the coaching staff. It's changed a little bit since I've been here, but I really loved, he was a huge reason why I went why I came here and why I've mm -hmm. been here for so long because 
Um, he very much believed in me and what I was capable of and what I could do. And um, the girls here have been awesome. And mm -hmm. um, the ones that were here when I was coming in were a huge part of like the culture that have been here. And I could see how much they cared and how much they loved it here. And gotcha. um, yeah, so it's, it was definitely like, I didn't have a ton of options to be honest. Like gotcha. I didn't have a ton of people that were looking at me, but um, I am very glad that I have been able to be here and I've loved every second of my time here. And I've definitely grown as a person being here, which and ultimately is the biggest thing. But um, yeah, the biggest reason why is probably the, Jeremiah and the girls and mm -hmm. just seeing everybody here. Well, really and it's, it's always great to be at a place where you feel, you know, where you can be your best, where you feel like you're going to grow. Um, and, and that's some advice that I've gotten is if you feel like you're at a place where you're not going to grow, you should go somewhere different. And I feel like that's for you. Weber state has been that place. And coach Larson's kind of been that guy to help you kind of grow and into the person that you are. So um, that's, that's, that's super cool to see kind of how that that's transpired. And so, um, as you transitioned from high school to college, uh, Kate, can you kind of talk about what's the biggest difference you notice from playing high school volleyball to now jumping in as a freshman in college, um, at the college level, what's kind of the biggest difference you noticed in those, in those two? Oh, there, I feel like there's a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel like one, especially volleyball specific, like I'm sure that it's similar in every sport, but yeah the speed of the game is way different. And I yeah. feel like, I feel like everybody is always like, oh yeah, it's different in college. Like it's different in college, but I feel like you don't actually fully come to realize the differences oh, yeah. until you're actually there. It's like people can tell you and prepare you, but I feel like until you actually are there, it's like, oh wow. Like there is a difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for sure the speed is very different. It's a lot faster, especially in the big sky, we're not like these six, nine hitters. We're not like these super big physical hitters. So mm -hmm. all of the offenses are a lot faster. Got you. Um, Cause you kind of have to, we kind of use our speed instead of like super physicality with, that's how it kind of works in our conference. Mm -hmm. um, so the speed is definitely different. I think one thing that like, isn't super talked about is there's kind of like a, I don't really know how to explain it super well, but there's kind of like this undescribed pressure, this like okay. invisible pressure gotcha. that it's like, oh, I'm representing this school, like, or I'm doing, you know, like I'm playing at such a high level that it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I have to be good or I have to do this, you know, there's yeah. kind of like this invisible expectation that it feels like that's not. I mean, it's kind of there, but like, it's mm -hmm. kind of like your career now, if you think about it, like yeah. you want to perform the best that you can, because it's kind of your career in a sense, your job. And um, I think like, that was something that I was like, wow, I've never like felt this kind of feeling before. Like I've played in high situations, whatever, but like, that was very different. That was very hard um, to kind of manage at first. And mm -hmm. I think especially because um when you come in as a freshman, it's like, oh, I'm going to work so hard. I'm going to work yeah. to start like whatever. And yeah. when that doesn't go that way, it's like, oh, like, am I, it's kind of like, we kind of, did I do something school. wrong or did I, you know? Did yeah, I, did exactly. We use the, the metaphor at right? our school and it's like, you were a big fish in like a small pond when you were gotcha. in high school. And gotcha. now you're in a big pond with a lot of big fish while you're a big fish still. So it's just yeah. very different. Gotcha. Um, mm hmm I would say that those are like my two biggest, biggest differences. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. And the, the one thing that I'm also interested in now, since you came into college right before NIL started, and now you're, you're, you have gone through that NIL process while NIL has been enacted in the college game. So can you talk about, you know, like, how did you approach that when NIL, what was your, thought process with NIL, how did you approach any deals or anything that may occur? Can you speak on that a little bit as well during college? Yeah, I can. I probably have a very different opinion than most people do okay. when it comes to that. Gotcha. To be honest, um, I really don't have, I haven't really reached out. I haven't done a ton with it, to be honest. Gotcha. Um, and in my own 
mind it's like I haven't I just haven't done a ton about it I do yeah. think that it has changed the game of volleyball and like mm -hmm. any sport in college across the board a ton yep. especially when it comes to recruiting and transfer portal stuff mm -hmm. um me personally I haven't really reached out I haven't really done a ton I probably gotcha. could if I want but I haven't just because okay. I feel like I've received a ton anyways just gotcha. being but I, I just figured I'd, I know like now with athletes in the NIL space, mm -hmm. the portal space, I figured I'd kind of get your guys' perspective on that. If you had any, um, or, you know, um, yeah, I know what your thoughts are on that. So, yeah, I think that it definitely changed the way that recruiting happens and the way that people can transfer now, which is kind of crazy. It's like, Oh, I don't have any money for you, but I can give you a ton of money based upon this, which I think is awesome. Like, especially for, um, athletes that, it's really hard to work a job while you're in, yeah. while you're playing college sport. And it's really yeah. hard to have any kind of like other career, I guess you could say, cause that takes up so much of your time. So I think it's yeah. awesome that like there is that opportunity for you to, cause sometimes like you think about it and you don't really have time for a job. So it's like, where do I get the money that I have one to live now and two to help me like later on when my sport is over, you know? Yeah. So I think that it's really awesome that people get the opportunity that they can find ways to find that for them mm -hmm. or like even just like cool things that they can try or whatever. Yeah. Um, I do think that that's really awesome because it is hard to work while you're trying to play yeah. a college sport. Try to, it's, it's like a full-time job basically mm -hmm. uh, balancing both work and school. So um, no, I definitely agree with you. And so um, before we kind of uh, in the episode here, I wanted to ask you, we talked about kind of the, the positive, like the kind of changes and the differences between high schools uh, and, and college and kind of your college experience. Um, and then you mentioned, you know, coach Larson and, and, and the girls at uh, Weber state are, are, you know, responsible for kind of like the, the, the expression that the, the success that you've enjoyed um, at Weber state and, um, you know, the winning the big sky title last year's uh, through the the tournament and the run that you guys had was, was phenomenal. And, um, but what, on the flip side of that, what are some challenges like at the collegiate level that you faced through volleyball or um, with, with volleyball or just overall in general at the college level, being a college student athlete? Yeah. I kind of mentioned before my college experience has not been exactly what I thought that it would be and that's okay. And yeah. I think, one thing, so like just like an idea, when I came in, I actually ended up redshirting my freshman year, mm -hmm. which at the time I was like, wow, I did not want to do this. Like this yeah. is terrible, but it actually ended up being probably the best thing that I could have done. Yeah. And then my first couple years after that, I didn't even set. I just played DS in the back row. I gotcha. um, sat behind Ashlyn Power, who was our setter at the time, who was awesome and such a good mentor and a good person and everything. And yeah, um, I finally got the opportunity to take it over in 2022. And yeah. um, I think that just because it wasn't necessarily what I thought and it was um, kind of like, it's hard to be able to be like, oh, I was this back then and now I have yeah. to start over and mm -hmm. I have to find my place and gotcha. figure it everything out I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned while I've been here um have you ever heard of what the yips are no I've not so kind of it's like baseball players and golfers get it a lot and it's oh, like, okay I, okay I see what you're talking about yeah you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I'm talking about now gotcha gotcha, gotcha gotcha so in case like people that listen don't know or whatever yeah. basically what they are is it's like you've done a motion your entire life so like baseball players for example the second baseman throwing to first to get an out right they've done it so many times in their life and then all of a sudden it's kind of like a mental block of like oh like you make it you do make a mistake one time and or a couple times and it kind of just keeps bleeding and then eventually it's like I can't even throw to first like what's going yeah. on you know what yeah. I mean and in the 2021 fall season since we played two seasons that year so because of COVID since it was weird or whatever yeah, yeah towards the end of the season I kind of fell into it wasn't quite the yips yet but like it was kind of getting there and every yeah. time I would set a ball outside it was like double 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 just spinning oh, like crazy I see and so it was kind of like that was probably like one of the hardest things that I've had to go through while I've been here gotcha 
but I think it's been one of the best things for me as Got you. not fun as it was and one of the best lessons that I've learned because I think coming from that and like being able to get out of it and change the way that I think about like mistakes or the way that I think about other people's opinion or things like that Mm. are all things that you can get very wrapped up playing a college sport you know like you don't want to make mistakes because you don't want to let your team down or you don't want to look funny because you have tons of people watching you or that pressure that you just feel like you have to be perfect sometimes you know the perfectionistic mindset kind of comes in I got you I think going through that especially has helped me in like volleyball and just kind of my normal life be a Mm. lot willing to step out of my comfort zone and do things that maybe I don't necessarily love doing or that's kind of hard because of what could possibly happen after you know like I definitely would not be the same person and I would not be the same setter that I am today if I did not go through something like that Mm -hmm. and like those different challenges and stuff and college athletics I think something that they don't tell you or like they try to tell you is that it's a very hard thing to do right like it's especially at the division one level and what what, mm -hmm. you know Yeah. It's not an easy thing. And it's, yeah. um, I think sometimes we look at these athletes or even like professional, you could say, and you look at these athletes and it's like, wow, like they have everything together. Like mm-hmm. they are, they just know everything. They know who they are. They don't get faced by anything. But I think yeah. it's really hard for us to be like, oh, they're just like me yeah. in another way or shape or form. You know, they have weaknesses, they have strengths. And I, that's most definitely okay. Cause that's something that everybody has. And so I think going through like that and just kind of everything that I've going through college athletics that you've been, Mm -hmm. definitely it's challenging by all means, but I think it's, for me, it's been the most rewarding thing that I could have done and being able to be here and be the person that I am now because of it has been so rewarding. But I think every, a lot of things are challenging that we don't really see, you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of unseen, like you talked about the invisible pressure. You talk about some of the invisible challenges that people, people see the success, people see the big sky title, but you don't see kind of the, the work that's led up to that point and kind of all you had to do to get there. So Mm -hmm. no, I definitely, uh, definitely feel you on that one. I definitely agree with that as well. And I, I think that's going to kind of lead into kind of what I'm going to talk about next is like, like I uh, do with every episode at the end, I try to give athletes a chance to and the reason I started this was because I I coach football um here in Greeley uh wanted to kind of showcase to younger kids and uh youth football and younger kids here about kind of how what it takes to be what it takes to be a college athlete things of that nature kind of get their perspective so Kate if you're the, the, what I post to you is if you're talking to young girls now as uh the person you are as a setter you are now at Weber State you were talking to a room full of young young youth athletes young girls that want to play women's volleyball at the college level and get to your level what's the one piece of advice that you would provide them with um I would say that it's definitely a lot of hard work Mm -hmm. and it might be a little uncomfortable at times and maybe that means that you do things that maybe make you a little uncomfortable or push you out of um, where you kind of want to live. But I think at the end of the day, it's so rewarding. And like me as a coach, I actually coach and stuff. That's kind of what I like to do on the side. I'm a teacher. I'm mm-hmm. a PE teacher and a coach yeah, also, yeah. but I think that it's a lot of hard work and it's really hard, but it's so rewarding. And in so many ways, other than just volleyball, like, Yes, Mm -hmm. you'll work hard. There's a good chance that you can get where you want to get. Like, if not, you did all the hard work and you can be proud of that and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's so rewarding also because you will grow so much as a person Mm -hmm. and learn so many different things. I think one thing, sports has very much prepared me for life through all the hard things and through all the challenges and stuff, knowing that I'm a lot more capable of what I think that I am. And I think sometimes we forget that. And so being able to like go through those uncomfortable times and those hard things very much pushes us and shows us that we are capable of so much more. And we just sometimes forget that, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get you. 
And that's the, I mean, that's the power. They always talk about the power of sport, right? And kind of what it does. It has the power to unite people. It has the power to kind of impact people. And you can use those lessons in in sport um, and, and apply them to life. And, and that's kind of how, and vice versa and how, how that process goes. And um, it's great to hear that, right? Because a lot of your kids, I feel like they feel like they, they got to work hard for sport and everything. But it, at, when you get into the collegiate space, you grow, you, you talked about that here as well. You grow so much as a person just in general in life um, through that experience. It's, it, it's great to hear that. So no, I appreciate that, Kate. Um, but that's all the time we have uh, for this edition of the Athlete Insights Podcast. Uh, I'll have Kate's social media on the video um, so you guys can follow Kate um, on social media. And uh, you can follow our podcast on YouTube uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, basically anywhere you get podcasts, you can listen to this as well. Um, so once again, Kate, I appreciate you uh, taking the time. I know it's it's a uh, it's a busy time. You guys got camps. You said you coach on the side as well, so I'm sure you got you got some summer camps for for volleyball um, coming up as well. So I appreciate you kind of taking the time um, and chatting with me today. So, but uh, yeah, of course. Thanks for yeah. having me. Yeah, no worries. So, but we'll uh, we'll see you next time. <music>